Oh, please be seated. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Tuttle, Vice Chairman of the New York Stock Exchange and President of the NYC Institute. And on behalf of our entire organization, a very, very warm welcome to the NYSE. We are honored to welcome His Excellency Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos, Jr., President of the Republic of the Philippines, for today's program. Mr. President, thank you for being here today and for bringing members of your cabinet and senior executives from Philippine companies. Your presence is a testament to your focus on and commitment to further growing the Philippine economy and providing more opportunity for your citizens. A fast growing economy with an educated and ambitious workforce and meaningful economic reforms are coming together to make the Philippines an attractive destination for investment. And I have to say, looking at today's room, clearly you have gained the attention of business leaders and investors. We at the NYSC enjoy hosting programs like this where we can bring together leaders from the public sector and private sector to share ideas, to build relationships, and ultimately deliver impact. And with today's program, I am confident that we will further strengthen an already great partnership between our markets, between our businesses, between our people, and ultimately between our countries. To begin our program, I have the pleasure of introducing Sabin Aboites, who is CEO of Aboites Group, and importantly, leader of President Marcos's Private Sector Advisory Council. Please join me in offering him a very warm welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. As a representative of the Philippine business and behalf of the delegation here today, I wanna to thank all of you for the invitation to visit the financial center of the universe and touch base with our friends in the American business community. Your warm welcome is strongly felt and greatly appreciated. Personally, I'm really thrilled to be here. <laughs> the New York Stock Exchange has energy like nowhere else in the world. The only natural and appropriate response to this invitation would be to return the favor in the best way that we know how. And with the same spirit of goodwill and partnership the United States has shown the Philippines for all these many decades. The friendship between our two countries has always been like Wall Street itself, a busy two-way street of economic give and take. And we sincerely hope and believe it will remain like this forever. So we're here today to support our president and his genuine efforts to revitalize this relationship and remind you of our commitment. We support his efforts to assure you of the integrity, of the stability, and the solidarity of his administration and the Philippine economic system, which is not without wounds, but neither without the determination to heal them. And of course, to unlock the massive economic potential our country has to offer with the help of good friends like you. We live in uncertain times, but in our corner of the world, the Philippines remains one of Asia's fastest growing economies. And with the pandemic now largely out of the way, we're back on the fast track, accelerating out of recovery mode and onto the promising possibilities of the future. Now more than ever, with the dawn of a new era of digital progress and an environment that has never been more enabling and conducive for business, the Philippines is ripe for investment. With the average Filipino being 23 years old, we have a large talent, a large talent pool of young, competent, and reliable human resources. Our workforce is educated, 
English proficient, strongly customer oriented, highly trainable and adaptable to different cultures. Being a critical entry point for over 600 million people in the ASEAN region, the Philippines has easy access to key markets, which is a gateway to the East Asian economies and is at the crossroads of international shipping lanes and airline routes. Our numerous operating economic zones and IT parks around the country are fully equipped with support capabilities that make it easy for companies of any size and from any part of the world to set up shop and conduct business, business with convenience and effectivity. We have a bountiful and beautiful natural resources that provide investment opportunities in our agriculture and tourism industries. Our business process outsourcing, electronics, manufacturing, creative, maritime resources, and export industries have similar potential with track records of success. And with a strong private-public partnership, we are aggressively building the critical infrastructure needed to support all our industries and enable businesses to grow and thrive on a globally competitive scale. But most importantly, we have a strong leader with a compelling vision and the political will to realize it. With a uniform, unified support of our Congress and the Filipino people, the new Marcos administration is taking a whole of government and nation approach to deliver on its promise to transform our economy. We in the business community believe in this vision. And as our longtime allies and partners, we hope you will too. I've seen many presidents in my lifetime and they all have their strengths. The one we have today has quite cleverly gotten 30 of our country's busiest CEOs to voluntarily work for him. <laughs> I know this because I'm one of them. And as convener of the Private Secretary Advisory Council to the President, I have witnessed the ability of this man to bring together the best minds in business, use them to find real solutions to real problems, and then immediately implement them like he was flipping a switch. This is why we work for him, because he listens to reason and gets things done, because he has the humility to seek the help of those who know more in order to provide help to those who need more. This is the kind of decisive action-oriented leadership we have today. This is the kind of leadership that inspires a nation to believe in its true worth. And this is the kind of inclusive and collaborative leadership that will transform our economy into the next big thing in Asia. I thank you and good afternoon. And on that note, I'd like to introduce the Secretary of Finance, Secretary Diokno, to introduce the President. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you the President of the Republic of the Philippines, President Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos, Jr. Please be seated. Uh, thank you, uh, Secretary Ben Jokno, uh, all the members of the cabinet of the Philippines, Mr. John Tuttle, the Vice Chairman of the New York Stock Exchange, and uh, for those kind words from Mr. Sabine Aboites, the convener of the Private Sector Advisory Council. Uh, we have also with us the Speaker of the House, House Speaker Ferdinand Martin Romualdez, and the, our Ambassador to uh, the United States, Ambassador Jose Manuel Romualdez, also with us is our permanent uh, ambassador to the UN, uh, Ambassador 
Antonio Lagdameo Sr. And I would be uh, remiss if it, I did not, of course, include uh, in my greetings the First Lady uh, Lisa Araneta Marcos. <laughs> Distinguished guests uh, here today, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. On behalf of the Philippine delegation, I wish to express our gratitude to the New York Stock Exchange for inviting us here today. I consider it an engagement of invaluable opportunity to share with you how we are further opening up our economy to accelerate our recovery. Bouncing back from the pandemic, the Philippine economy has seen robust growth since last year and has returned to its path toward upper middle income country status, achievable, we believe, within the next few years. Against this backdrop, we have increased the scope for mutually beneficial investments that would mean more jobs and a better quality of life for Filipinos. For investors, doing business in the Philippines is an opportunity to reap the benefits of a vibrant economy. We are proud to share that we recently enacted policies to further liberalize our economy and welcome more foreign investment to our shores. First, we passed legislation to lower corporate income tax rates and rationalize fiscal incentives. Second, we reduced the minimum paid up capital requirements for foreign retailers and foreign startup, startups bringing in advanced new technology. And third, we now allow full foreign ownership of companies providing public services such as telecommunications, shipping, air carriers, railways, subways, airports, and toll roads. The United States and the Philippines have strong and enduring ties in trade and commerce, among many other areas of cooperation. The U.S. is our third largest trading partner and second major source of foreign direct investment applications in 2021. To international investors, the Philippines offers high quality labor, a large consumer market, and a wide range of fiscal and non-fiscal incentives. At the same time, we remain committed to maintaining sound macroeconomic fundamentals, providing a clear development roadmap. Let me expound a little bit on these important points. First, sound macroeconomic fundamentals. Our gross domestic product is projected to grow by 6.5% to 7.5% this year, by 6.5% to 8% from 2023 to 2028. The employment situation has improved following the temporary disruption caused by the pandemic the un unemployment spike of 17.6% in April 2020 fell drastically to 5.2% in July this year, the lowest record for all July rounds of our labor force survey since 2005. Manufacturing activity has accelerated, staying above the growth threshold of 50 for the past seven consecutive months and settling at 51.2 last August. Trade is back to double-digit growth, with demand for trade partners boosting our exports, and with domestically situated firms importing more inputs in anticipation of rising demand. At the same time, with our commitment to fiscal discipline, the country's debt-to-GDP ratio has improved to 62.1% as of end June this year, from 63.5% in the previous year. At the height of the COVID-19 crisis, the government implemented massive stimulus programs to readily support the most vulnerable sectors. Although our borrowings increased substantially during the pandemic, we continue to reduce the cost of our public debt through judicious debt management. Now that the economy is reverting to normalcy, the government is likewise heading back to the path of fiscal consolidation. We will reduce the government debt to GDP ratio to below 60% by 2025 and further down to 51.2% by the end of my term in 2028. 
Our economy's resilience to crises is recognized internationally. The Philippines has maintained its investment-grade credit ratings throughout the pandemic amid the wave of rating downgrades globally. As we look forward to achieving upper-middle income status, we are also gearing up for a territory credit ratings in the medium term. On the external front, we have sufficient buffers against external shocks. Supported by steady inflows of overseas Filipino remittances, receipts from business processing, outsourcing, and foreign direct investment, our gross international reserves stood at $99 billion as of end August, equivalent to 8.3 months of import cover. This remains more than sufficient to cover the, econo the economy's foreign exchange needs. Moving on to my second point, our economic development roadmap. In the near term, our top priorities are protecting the purchasing power of families by managing inflation, reducing the scarring effects of the pandemic, and ensuring sound macroeconomic fundamentals. Thus, we are implementing policies that enhance food security, transport, reduce energy costs, and logistical costs. Strengthen social protection and enhance the quality of education and skills training of our workers. As we pursue our short-term agenda, we build the foundations for a stronger, more inclusive future. Our medium-term agenda includes reducing the poverty rate to single digits by 2028 and undergoing an industrial transformation through which science, technology, and innovation and sustainability will drive our industries. In all our endeavors, the private sector must be a partner. We seek partnerships in many areas of our development agenda in public infrastructure, such as mass transit systems, airports, toll roads, in public services, in digitalization initiatives, in the energy development agenda, in efforts to modernize agriculture, and in programs aimed at strengthening our industries, to just name a few. For American businesses, we offer investment opportunities in areas such as information technology and business process management, or IT BPM, medical products and devices, electric vehicles and batteries, agribusiness and telecommunications infrastructure and services. Despite external headwinds, the Philippines' economy's resilience reinforced by sound policies and decisive leadership makes us confident about our future. Over the past few decades, as the Philippines transformed into one of the most promising emerging markets, the United States has been among our steady partners. For that, we are truly grateful. At the same time, American companies doing business in the Philippines have benefited significantly from our economic successes. I wish to emphasize that the Philippines is keen to continue nurturing the ties that help produce mutual benefits for both our economies, our organizations, and our peoples. Let us achieve many more milestones together. Thank you very much for this opportunity and good afternoon to you all. We move on to this Q and A. Well, thank you very much, Mr. President, for your remarks and obvious support of investment in the Philippines. In your speech, you discussed the fact that the Philippines is now allowing full foreign direct ownership in companies providing public infrastructure. How important is foreign direct investment into achieving those economic plans of yours, Mr. President? Well, I th uh, it, it, is it should be on. Uh, certainly, uh, as we attempt to transform the economy, and I use the word transform uh, because in my it is my belief that the way to bring our economies back 
to the activity, the level of activity that we enjoyed before the pandemic, we have to understand that the global economy has changed. And we have to position ourselves, certainly, uh, to be able to, to, be, to take advantage of those changes, to, uh, to have a head start in the new economy uh, that uh, we are still, as of now, starting to form globally. And that the, a large part of that will be foreign investment in the Philippines. And when I speak of foreign investment, I speak especially of uh, capital intensive investment. Uh, because although we have our GDP, if we look at our GDP figures, a great deal of uh, the contribution to GDP has been in our service sector. And therefore, we think that it is manufacturing, uh, the area of manufacturing where we can still do a better job. And this is one way the foreign direct investment, capital intensive uh, investment is also something that we are going to actually to need uh, for us to be able to achieve the targets that we have set for our economy, have set for our, our country. And uh, it, is going, it is going to be key. As we are trying to, we are trying to uh, define or determine the mix between uh, loans and capital intensive uh, investment. So the part that capital intensive investments play is going to be a very important, uh, a very important aspect of this transformation of our economy that I speak of. So uh, the, that is a large part of what we are doing here. And that is why when I came here to New York, Ostensibly, first of all, because uh, we are attending the, I will be speaking before the UN General Assembly tomorrow, but I also brought the whole economic team of the government, of the cabinet uh, with us, and again, the uh, private sector uh, business leaders also are here with us, uh, precisely to show and explain once to our prospective investors, where the Philippines is headed, what changes we have made for the, so that investment will be more profitable and uh, more attractive for foreign investors, especially coming from the United States. So it plays a central role in all that we are planning to do for our economy. It is, uh, once again, uh, something that we recognize in government we have a part to play in. Uh, we have to fundamentally restructure the bureaucracy, the government. Uh, we listen to the chambers of commerce that, have, that uh, tell us what are the obstacles that they find that in their way, uh, such as the ease of doing business, the prices of energy, all of these um, and these other legislative, legislative guarantees that uh, investors are looking for. And we are ahead, I believe we are headed in the right direction. And I believe that if we continue down this road and we are able to attract investors uh, to this new uh, investing climate that we are starting to create in the Philippines, then uh, I believe that uh, with the role that foreign investment will play, foreign direct investment will play, uh, I think we could succeed. But that, is, that just uh, illustrates how important we consider uh, that investment to the transformation of our economy. Well, thank you very much, Mr. President. You mentioned two themes in particular. One was, of course, foreign direct investment, but you also touched on the United States and it being one of the most important investors in the Philippines. Now, the United States and the Philippines have long enjoyed a very productive relationship and partnership. Can you talk a little bit about that partnership and how you see it going forward? Well, it, it, uh, our relationship has gone, gone back for over 100 years between the United States and the Philippines. And as, um, I, we, just earlier today, we had uh, a lunch that was uh, hosted by the U.S. Philippine Society. And I spoke to them and we talked uh, perhaps more on the subject of geopolitics. And I explained that it is very clear to me uh, in my vision for the, the way that the country will move forward, uh, that I cannot see 
the Philippines in the future without having the, the, having the United States as a partner. And although I was referring to the geopolitics of it, and I was re referring to the political situation in the region and around the world, that certainly does continue to apply in our exchanges in the, in the economic front. And uh, many of the drivers of our early economy were actually American corporations. Um, many of the uh, strongest uh, uh, corporate uh, benefactors, really, to government and to the rest of society in the Philippines were coming from the United States. Now, of course, uh, this has evolved as time has gone on, but the strength of that relationship continues. And we envision a strengthen, a further strengthening of uh, those relationships. I, I, I believe that the political, economic, uh, diplomatic relations that we make, the partnerships that we forge or that, and that we strengthen now are going to be extremely necessary for the simple reason that they provide the stability in this highly unstable economic, political, geopolitical, diplomatic environment. This is something that, uh, that is central to um, our thinking you know, when it comes to the economic, the economic planning for the Philippines. So again, uh, we have adjusted many of our ways of doing business uh, at the behest of our friends in the, in the United States and of the American uh, businesses that are already in the Philippines. And so I think that that will uh, give us great opportunities in the future and uh, for both our countries, uh, for private corporations, for um, for government to government uh, uh, agreements and arrangements, uh, we have really opened up the policy of the Philippines to to more of these uh, public-private uh, partnerships. Uh, but not only PPPs, but also uh, G2G arrangements, as I mentioned, uh, joint venture uh, from, uh, between private entities. And it is something that we feel uh, can actually be achieved. So the United States is, uh, has always been central to that. Uh, I, I, I cannot overstate, really, the role that the United States has played uh, in the Philippines in every aspect of, uh, of our lives. Uh, and so this is just a continuing evolution and, stre and, I believe, strengthening of that relationship between the United States and the Philippines. And uh, we are driven together uh, in many ways by forces that, uh, that exist now in, in the world. And uh, that, I think, is something that, uh, not, that, that, is, that, is not, uh, that we, certainly in the Philippines, and I think not in the United States either, that we are resistant to. So it is something that we can, I, I, I can see. Uh, as becoming stronger and becoming more robust uh, as, the, as, we, as we work together uh, towards the new, towards exploiting uh, properly the new global economy. Thank you very much, Mr. President. You, uh, you touched on American businesses investing in the Philippines and the opportunities to do that through public-private partnerships, the infrastructure projects you identified on the onset as well. But as, as we look at the population and we look at the economy, it's young, it's dynamic, it's tech-focused, it has high English language fluency, it's, in, it, it's, it's ripe for investment. What is your message to investors in this room, those watching us from around the world, for how to invest in this next generation of Philippine companies that one day, selfishly, we hope will come here to the, to the New York Stock Exchange to raise capital and to grow and expand and even do more things? What is your message to them, Mr. President? Well, <laughs> Uh, to achieve exactly was, uh, what you are saying, uh, at least uh, uh, to begin with. Uh, yes, we certainly, when, we, uh, when, when I'm asked, what, why do you have a, such a bright view of the future? And I, all, my answer is always uh, that uh, there are 110 million Filipinos that are working towards the same goal. And that, I still believe, is our, our workforce is still our greatest asset. 
and it is something that uh, we have seen succeed. Uh, in the first of all, in, with with our over overseas uh, Filipino workers, but also in the development of the more sophisticated businesses that have come to the country, and uh, highly technical, uh, highly uh, requiring requiring technical proficiency, requiring good training in schools. We will we will still continue uh, to try and and improve the education system in terms of the technical side, the, tech, uh, the technical side of our, of our workforce's training. And uh, as we know, because that is becoming more and more important in the world. But the young people in the, in the Philippines also, I suppose it is, uh, there is a, a form of institutional memory uh, and we still look to the United States as our partners. When we are in crisis, we look to the United States. We look to uh, the, oh, the relationship that has been forged over the many years. And I have to say that uh, the reason that we have done that is that for the most part, we can say that the United States has not failed us. That sentiment remains in our young uh, men and women. That sentiment remains and will, I think, be further fostered if we are able to show some successes, at least immediately, uh, we show some immediate successes in this partnership. And that will galvanize our young people to continue to work in that direction. That, I think, is something that will come naturally if we are able to do all of the things that we are hoping to do to transform the economy, to adjust now. We are, I believe, the youngest country in Asia. Uh, and with the graying of uh, other countries around uh, the region, this gives us an advantage in uh, terms of, uh, I suppose, the uh, the population dividend it uh, was, was ref has been referred to before uh, it gives us an advantage in terms of the population dividend. And they are ready to take up the cudgels. They are ready to work for the country. They are ready to do what needs to be done to bring the country forward. And I, uh, I, 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 I feel confident in saying that because in the last election, it was the young people who drove forward the idea that we must continue to invest in our young people. We must continue to train them properly. We must continue to make them competitive anywhere in the world, but most hopefully in the Philippines with our partners and with our allies. Well, thank you very much, Mr. President. It is clear, it is clear you have a plan, you have an opportunity. And I know I speak for many business leaders and investors in this room that they leave today not only with a renewed sense of optimism, but a further enhanced and strengthened sense of optimism about the opportunities in the Philippines. And on behalf of the New York Stock Exchange, we are thrilled to play our small little part today in providing a platform for you and your country to deliver that message. And there's no better platform than the bell, which is the most <laughs> highly viewed news event in the world on a given day. Um, and, well, and uh, uh, similar to, uh, to what Mr. Aboyt has mentioned, we are all thrilled to be here. <laughs> uh, as we were when we were talking before coming out here, I said, well, you know, uh, of course, we're familiar with the New York Stock Exchange and the bell and the most, that most important balcony in the world. Uh, uh, but now we, but we had always watched it from afar, and uh, the, to 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 get have the opportunity to be here personally and to be with all of you in the New York Stock Exchange has been a great opportunity and a great pleasure. Well, wonderful, thank you very much. It is our honor to have you here, Mr. President. Thank you all for being with us today, and we'll make our way down and ring that bell, Mr. President. Thank you very much.